<laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Hello, everybody. My name is Dude, and welcome back to Magical Diary Horse Hall. Um, we last left off, we confessed to Ellen, I think? I think that was the last thing we did. I can't really check that, can I? I cannot. Whatever. That's totally fine. We're going to balance out some... Uh, actually, no, let's just do white and green magic again for the week. Oh, good, I'm not stressed, but I could use some study. Yeah, I'm gonna use study. We're gonna do white and green and study the rest of the week. Uh, before we actually hit done, we have a tradition here at the Dude Run Does Things live streams, and we're going to continue doing it until... People get sick and tired of doing it, and then we're gonna do it a little bit more, and then I'll probably change it up a little. But anyway, until that happens, please shove one hand in your pants and salute as we listen to the stream anthem. If you're unable to do so, that is totally fine. It's an optional thing. It's whatever you want to do, fam. Fam. There we go. Subtitles finally got it. All right. <laughs> I still have not cleaned my kazoo. But that's nothing new, because I I never get around to it. Anyway, let's do this. Three, ma three green magic. Yay. That's a lot. Am I going to get three again? Yay! Ground spell. Interrupts targets casting to redirect their spell to the ground or floor. Nice. It would suck, though, if uh, it was an explosion spell and it blew up the floor at our feet, and then we all fell to a, in a pit or some shit and, like, regretted our life choices and whatnot. That would really suck. On Saturday morning, the mail and allowances are delivered. What should I do today? We should probably study. But I'm going to the mall. Because fuck. Actually, no, that is a bad idea, because I can't afford anything. Yeah, I can't afford anything. Let's just study. Study with Minnie. Get my black magic up. We'll sleep throughout at some point in the week. So, what happened? Nothing. Nothing important happened at all. At all. Nothing. Nothing of value was gained or lost. Okay. Just do the next week. What should I do this week? Are we gonna have anything of importance happen soonish? I hope so, because I would really like to. Now let's do a bit of blue magic. Just a bit of blue magic. Entangle. Causes any non-sentient plant life in the area to twine around target, trapping it. Ooh. After classes, all the students are called together in the gym. There's a table on the stage containing a row of brightly colored candles, of which only one, at the end, is lit. Oh, are we about to celebrate Hanukkah? Is that the... No, that's not Hanukkah. Today we are here to recognize outstanding Irish Academy seniors, the best and brightest of our young people, with induction into the Magical Honor Society. But what, should be, what you should be most proud of is... Not the honor you received today, but the choices and the sacrifices you have made that led you to this point and to points beyond. That's right! That one blood sacrifice you gave last night actually probably will lead you somewhere profitable and prosperous in the next few hundred years. I don't know. That I had a joke and then I lost it. Yeah. 
A life well lived is its own reward. As seen as you stand as shining examples to those who will follow you. Therefore, as I call your names, please come up to the stage and take one of these candles to pass on the light. What? Are all the freshmen holding the lights and we're gonna get the get our candles lit or something? She lists off a number of seniors. William and Miss Sobel. Isabel? Isabel? Are among them, but Damien is not. Damien's kinda gone, isn't he? He just kinda disappeared. He just takes the candle and then that has been most recently lit and touches it to the next candle in line, passing the flame. And one more student who deserves special recognition for her hard work. What? In creative thinking in proposing a new theory behind the Icarus effect, Angela Kirsch. Kirsch? Kirsch? Whatever. Angela walks up to the stage, all smiles, and I hear Ellen grinding her teeth beside me. I wonder what's on her mind. What? Did she steal the idea from Ellen? Is that what I'm going to have to find out in, like, the next five minutes? Is that what happened? Each one of you has a calling in life. You set your own goals and strive to achieve them. Your goals are yours alone, and what is easy for you may not be easy for others. Whatever you do, never crush someone else's dream. But then you can be sure that you are not working toward your own goal. Something tells me that Ellen's dream got crushed. Are we gonna find out? No, we're not gonna find out. Okay, fine, whatever. Oh. Yay, we're zero stressed. I come back in the room to find Ellen turning the place upside down. She has books piled on top of books, half of them still open. It's a mess. Ellen is making a mess. What's going on? So stupid! What is... You know what her paper was about? What paper? Angela! This is about that honor society thing? She came up with this idea that there's a magical field around the Earth. Then it gets weaker as you move further away from the ground, so if you fly high enough the magic fails and you fall. That sounds like a reasonable idea. But it's just an idea! All she did was read about people flying and then make something up. She wrote an essay about how things might be and didn't do anything at all to find out if it was true. They're calling her brilliant for nothing but a just-so story. Uh-huh. I guess that's bad. I asked Professor Potsum about it, and she didn't even understand the question. I told Professor Grabiner about it was a bad practice, and he snapped at me! How can we learn magic from people who don't actually know how magic works? If nobody does any research, if nobody tries to figure out what makes things happen, anything we could do leads to a disaster. Anything we do could lead to is a disaster. Well, can you do research? What? I'm not sure I understand the problem either, but it sounds like you do. So maybe you should do something. Disprove it, you know? Maybe it's a whole gravity thing. Maybe it's not a field, but it's gravitational pull that prevents magic from not working or something. I don't know. Maybe flight is d is going against gravity, but when there's no gravity to go against, it kind of fails. Mm hmm. She goes back to flipping through books, but she looks less angry and more thoughtful. We've given her an idea. Good. When we arrive at the classroom, the only sign of Professor Gravener is two words written on the blackboard in large white letters: "Free period." Wait a few minutes until then, in case, just in case this is a prank, but he still doesn't turn up. I guess this class is canceled for the day. Sure, we'll study. This gives me some extra time to catch up on, on my studies. Yay! Well, that was a waste of time. I didn't even get blue magic. I'm disappointed. I need to go to the mall and buy something. Do you want to come? Hell yeah! Let's go to the mall with our friendo. When we reach the mall, Ellen immediately heads not in the direction of the bookstore, but to an unimpressive, generic-looking drugstore. What are you looking for? A camera. In a drugstore? It... Forget the fact that we're not allowed to have technology on us. You're going in a drugstore to look for a camera. 
What? There's gotta be an electronics store nearby somewhere. Right? You know that. Maybe you should go and let me shop on my own. Then you can say you didn't know. Why do you want a camera anyway? I'm not telling. Go on, I'll see you later. What should I do today? I don't know. Window shop. I don't want to spend money. It's not a very big mall, but there are books, clothes, music, and toys, so I keep myself entertained for a few hours. Yay! Uh... Is our friendo okay -o? Yeah, why does she want to smuggle a camera in? It seems like a shady practice that we should probably be concerned about for our friend who might actually get in trouble for that. That's a problem. That's kind of an, an issue. Call causes creatures to in the surrounding area to be drawn to the caster. Oh! When I come into the room, I nearly trip over Ellen. Why are you sitting on the floor? She stands up and tugs her cape and robe into proper position. Close-ups. Oh, you got the camera. Wait, why are you taking- what are you taking pictures of? I suppose she could be taking pictures of herself sitting on the floor, but why? That ball? One of the foam balls from the gym. Took it? I borrowed it? Why is it purple? Because I'm testing. I'm using blue magic to change the color and taking pictures to see if the camera records the ball's original color or the illusion color. Well, does it? It's a disposable camera. I can't see the results until I get it processed. Oh, that, uh, okay, that makes sense. I was thinking digital camera, or like, DSLR? I guess that's still digital. I was thinking of a different kind of camera, which I would still suspect would be in an, ele an electronic store rather than a drug store, but I guess this is a, of the day and age where disposable cameras are still used. Do as many tests as I can think of first. Wanna help? Sure, what should I do? Do you know the cloak spell? No. That's okay, I do, so you have to use the camera. Alright, what do I do? I'll walk over to where the ball is lying and then it'll disappear. Take a shot as soon as I get there. If you can get one while I'm vanishing, that's good, but at least get one after. It's slightly weird knowing that Ellen's in the room when I can't see her. It's an expensive spell and it doesn't last that long, so I don't think people are creeping around spying on us all the time. But right now my job is to point and click, and I do it with gusto. After the spell wears off, Ellen and I talk about other things we could photograph. It's not safe to cast a fire spell in the bedroom, but there are a few other things we can try. So we're batting the ball around with push spells and giggling and trying to take pictures at the same time when Virginia walks in. What are you guys doing? Experiments? You've got a camera. You're taking pictures in here? We're experimenting! You're gonna get in so much trouble. It's for science. Magical science. It's for Magitech. That, that's not correct. That's not correct. You won't tell, will you? Come on, we're friends. It's just for fun. I guess, but you really shouldn't. Ellen puts the camera away, and I suddenly kick the borrowed ball under her bed. We can take it back later. True. When are we gonna get it developed, though? In the evening, all the freshmen and sophomores are summoned to the gymnasium. Where two rows of long tables have been put in place for a pancake supper. We line up, girls on the left, boys on the right, and file in to take our seats. Classes in silverware, the glasses in silverware, are already in place, but no plates. One by one, people get up and walk to the stage, where the kitchen staff are handing out pancakes and syrup. Then they take those plates, but not back to their own seats. Boys carry plates to girls, and girls carry plates to boys. Why? Why? Can't we just grab our own plates? Is this like a courtesy thing? Is like... I guess it's a courtesy thing, but... Why, why though? I end up giving my plate to Manu Manuel. Okay. It's a strange way of going about things, but everyone gets fed in the end. True. Seems strange, though. Telepire. Ooh. Causes flames to erupt in a nearby known location. Oh, nice. That actually does sound like a cool spell. Not gonna lie. 
On Saturday morning, the mail and allowances are delivered. Uh, study. Because, like, that's all we can really do. <coughs> that's all we can really do here. Alright, next week. Um. I really want to work on more blue magic, but also a tiny bit more red. Maybe one red, a sleep, two blues, and a study? Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Freeze. Draws enemy... Draws energy out of target, causes damage, blocks movement, and may interrupt spells. Ooh. Target is temporarily incapacitated with pain and terror. Ooh. I think that's the Cruciatus Curse. Cruciatus Curse. There we go. Subtitles finally got it. Birds? I wake up suddenly in the middle of the night. I'm not sure why. I thought I heard something. Just then, the door to the room creaks open and Virginia slips inside. Virginia! Oh, you're awake. There's something going on out there. I had to get up and pee, but when I was coming back, there was all these weird noises. Like what? I don't know, like someone decided to play floor hockey in the middle of the night? Or a whole domino chain of folding chairs falling over? What's going on? I have no idea. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, and I didn't want to wander around alone at night trying to figure it out. I guess we should try to go back to sleep then? Probably. It's not so easy to get s get to sleep while wondering and worrying about what might be happening outside. We're getting up ready for the day when someone knocks on the door. Just a minute! There's no rush, it's only me. Listen, there was a problem last night and the staff were still busy dealing with it. Because of that, all classes for today are cancelled. We're passing the news. I think today was... A s oh, fuck, it was a blue mage day. Why the fuck is it always the blue magic days? What? I'm not sure. I heard that someone tried to blow up the school. Huh? Maybe it was a fire, I'm not sure. Are we in danger? Ah, oh, no, there's nothing to worry about. The professors will take care of it. You could relax for the day, or you could study for your exam on Friday. There's an exam on Friday? Uh, did I forget to tell you that? Yes. Sorry, there's an exam on Friday. Excuse me, I have more doors to knock on. I'll see you later. Thanks for letting us know. Ellen and I go back into the room. I guess we have the day off? This is creepy. Yeah! You didn't see anyone, anyone out last night, did you? No, I didn't go very far. It was only down the hall. Who would want to blow up the school? It's just a rumor. That might not be what happened. Something big happened if they canceled every class. Yeah. With no classes today, what should we do? Study. We need that mana. In the afternoon, runners are sent around to summon us to the gym. Hello. I'm sure you all have many questions, and so do we. I'll do my best to tell you what I can. Last night, there was a fire in Falcon Hall, targeted on a student bedroom while the occupants slept. We believe this fire was caused deliberately. However, it was quickly detected and no one was injured. Good. Unfortunately, we don't yet know who was responsible. We are questioning individuals at the moment, but if you have any information about these events, please speak to a teacher immediately. At the moment, we do not know if this was a prank that went wrong, or a deliberate attempt to injure one or more students, or worse. While we are investigating this, please stay safe. A fire in your sleep. You could die of smoke inhalation without even waking up. All your magical power is useless if you're not awake to use it. This is awful. Yeah. Kind of is. As the student population empties into the hallway, Virginia grabs our arms. Did you hear? I think Donald did it. Why? I don't know, because he's always causing trouble? Because they can't figure out what happened and he's sneaky enough to fool them? That means he's a suspect. That doesn't mean he did it. 
We've got magic. It's usually easy to prove who's responsible for things. If they're still investigating, then something weird's going on. If they pin this on Donald after everything he's done, he's going to get expelled. The wipe his brain for sure. But Logan's his roommate's twin brother. It wouldn't make any sense. It was Jake in, in Logan's room that got set on fire? Their bedroom door, not the whole room. It's the same thing, isn't it? If they hadn't caught the fire in time, it would have been. There's nothing we can do about it, though. I mean... You could do a little bit of investigation yourself, but I guess that would... ...mean getting our own brain wiped and expelled, so I don't fucking know. Donald's a horrible brat, but he's still my brother. Yeah... The teachers won't throw him out without proof, will they? They better fucking not, because I don't want to attend a school like this if that's the case. The next morning, someone walks in the well, knocks on the door. Guess who, ladies? Donald! Hey, they let you out? Yeah, it's all good. So what happened? Weird story, actually. Apparently, Barbara roams around the halls at night practicing ninja skills. She's a ninja now? Who's a ninja? Barbara likes to practice throwing knives when no one's in the halls to get in her way. So she does it in the middle of the night. That still doesn't sound safe. It's got got to do with the fire. So she's doing your ninja routine. She ducks and rolls, strikes a pose, and she fires a little spark at a door she's using for a target. Except here's the weird part. The rest isn't weird. The door bursts into flame, goes up like a torch. Our doors are that flammable? They shouldn't be, that's why it's weird. This story sounds fishy. Thanks, Virginia. Thanks for making that pun and bringing up my name for some fucking reason. I asked the professor if you don't believe me. She gave her memories and everything. Barbara acts so tough all the time, but no, one little surprise and she ran like a rabbit. Seriously, I guess she did good. She was startled, but she thought ahead enough to make a bang and wake up the falcons before she ran. Otherwise... And when she heard the rumor I might be expelled, she decided to come forward, so I guess that's kind of brave after all. Are they gonna expel her? Nah, it was an accident. She had no idea what would happen. There was something wrong with the door, and that wasn't her fault. What was wrong with the door? Nobody knows. Must have been a random magical mal fluctuation or something left over from a spell or prank in the past. Yeah, well, it's... I'm only gonna say this once, so you better appreciate it. I'm glad you're okay. Aww. Come on, we need to get ready for class. Yeah, I should go. Don't want to stroke my ego too much now, do ya? So Donald's off the hook, but this is a very strange story. I don't quite believe it myself. Finally getting blue mad. What do you mean I s failed studying? I've been here for months and I still haven't got the hang of it. What do you mean? What do you mean you failed studying? How do you fail studying? Do you just not get the topic or something? You have a whole day to un try to understand the topic, though. I get that it could be frustrating, but like a short break and then coming back to it later wouldn't mean you failed, right? Unless we really couldn't understand one concept the entire day. I report to the room on schedule for my exam. Here we go! Actually, let me, uh... Save scum this hardcore. As soon as I'm able to save. In order to pass this exam, you must reach the exit before your opponent does. I have an opponent? Oof. Good luck. I have an opponent? Oh, hello. A hooded figure from the east. This must be the opponent. Sleep! The headed figure falls asleep. Good. You hear a loud chime. 
Uh oh. Seems to be a closed door in the hallway. Uh, can I open it? I guess there was a chime, so... Is there a... Do I have a spell that opens doors? No. No, I do not. I'm guessing the chime. Fucking... Can't you just fucking not? Sir. All badge, all hidden. Kiss him. I don't want to. We don't even know if it's a he. Go away. Alright, now. I have very little mana. I need... Something. What do I need? It's not a lot of, uh... Oh, here we go. No illusions. Shit. It's gotta be something. No spirits. Of course not. Doors are locked, of course they fucking are. Excuse me, hello, be quiet. Mark of red, meh, the doors shutter. So we're both stuck here, right? including ghosts and creatures from other world. The only spirit you detected is the hooded figure. Oh crap, we're both here. Um... Entangle? Do I have enough for that? I have nine mana, I don't. Shit. to the east. Seems to be blowing to the south. Do I have enough to sleep him again? Of course not. I'm not gonna do sickness. Though I definitely would love to use slow. Or sleep again. I probably should have done that. Tap the flow. Moves to the west. What about the south, though? I... I made it. 
I made it before him. That was good, right? Yay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other students to tend to. But that felt very weak. How was your exam? It went pretty well, I think. How was yours? I got bonus points for beating the other guy with a logic puzzle. Oh, that's neat. Professor Potsdam recognized that logic puzzles are good, that maybe I can get her to understand the importance of scientific thinking and magic. Maybe she'll even help fund a research proposal. Are we a little young for that? What if there's an amazing discovery just out of reach because nobody's bothered to investigate it yet? The world shouldn't have to wait. Okay, okay. I can just picture her having, like, big round glasses that sh that don't actually show anything past the glass, so she's just pushing them up and it's all shiny. You're certainly a mad scientist. On Saturday morning, the mail and allowances are delivered. What should I do? Study. You should study. Because we didn't understand something last time. Fish! Come see. What is it? A fish! It's the pictures I took earlier. I picked them up. What? I picked them up at the mall yesterday. See? Blue magic does show up on film. You had pictures of magic developed at the mall? Where else would I do it? I don't know. Maybe a, the gym bathroom or something? I don't know. I don't know, but if they looked at the pictures, won't they think there's something weird going on? People do weird things with cameras all the time. This is nothing compared to a special effect in the movies. I guess? You know, I'm gonna take notes on these results and start planning my next experiment. Those pictures are kind of cool. I wonder what my parents would think if they saw them. They would not be allowed to see them. Or they'd think it's probably special effects or some shit. I don't fucking know. Um... I got a lot of spells up to... I got three kinds of magic up to 50, so maybe I should do... I definitely need more mana. Definitely need more mana, because... Fuck, I only had, like... Two sleeps? Enough for one and a half sleeps. That's not nearly enough. We'll do that and finish with a sleep. And hopefully, disruption interrupts the casting of a spell, causing it to fizzle. Nice. Oh boy! Did you hear? Hear what? Damien's been expel. What? Oh, Randy got caught trying to take advantage of a freshman boy. No names named. And then Professor Potsdam called down flaming swords that sliced him up, and he ran away. That sounds a little over-exaggerated. Well, that's just what I heard. The important thing is he's gone. No more demon boy! I wonder what really happened. If we had dated him, we probably would know. But, nah, I don't wanna. In the morning, all three of us are busy trying to organize our belongings before we leave for the holidays. Are you gonna- going to the play today? There's a play today? Eh, probably if I remember where I put my change. Oh, right. Tickets cost money. Hell yeah, I'm going! Unless tickets are $25. Tomorrow I'll be home again, and then there's only one month of school left. Yeah. There are a lot of people here in this hallway. Not just students, but ordinary people and families who must have driven up here to see the play. After I buy my ticket... It's only $5. Okay, good. That's fine. A small place of purchase of frightening things is an exciting story packed with song and dance and special effects. Especially the scene where the librarian has to fend off an entire jungle of killer plants with her flaming sword in order to rescue her swooning love interest. But it's a jungle of killer plants and you have a flaming sword. Of course you're gonna fucking win. Plants get set on fire. How the... This is exciting. I don't know a lot about music, but the songs are fun and keep things moving. Unfortunately, by the end, it would appear that the world is doomed. But thankfully, only the world on stage. Doomed! And then it's time to go. 
And then we never speak of it again. And then nothing happens of interest on vacation. Nothing. Nothing of value or interest happened. Which is sad. Well, another visit over. I can't help but think that this feels more like coming home than last Saturday did. Hi! How was your break? Fine? Uh-oh. How was your family? Awful. It's been a lot of times in the past where I thought Mama and Justin didn't understand me or wish that I was someone else, but now I think they actually hate me. I'm sure they don't hate you, they're your family. All po oh, oh, oh fish. Oh fish. You naive girl. Oh my god, no. Mmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. That is not all true. I don't know, it's just the way things are. Nope! It's the way things should be. It doesn't mean it is. That doesn't mean that it's going to be that way 100% of the time. So kids who get hurt by their parents, you think that just doesn't happen? Kids whose parents throw them out, you think that doesn't happen? Kids whose parents dump them and run off and never come back? So what does that make me? Crap, I forgot about Ellen's dad. Yeah, you weren't thinking, fish. No, no, Ellen, fish wasn't thinking. That, that's, that's not an Ellen thing, that's a fish thing. Maybe it is something wrong with me. Maybe I should have expected it. Once I wasn't living at home anymore. Out of sight, out of mind, just like my father. I guess I'm easy to forget. Not to me or not, I missed you. You say so. Well, what about your sister? She turned 13. And? She's not a witch. Is that good or bad? I guess it's good for her. She's happy, she's popular, and her parents adore her. She was afraid of ending up like me, and now she won't, so that's good, right? I think I've said enough stupid things for one afternoon, so I do the best I can think of. I give Ellen a hug. Your family is really horrible, you can have mine. I... Uh, but that's... Do you mean that? I don't think that's how that works. Well, I probably ought to get permission before showing up with a guest for the whole summer. But if you really needed somewhere to go, then of course I'd help. You're not alone. Wild Seed Solidarity. You're sweet. Thank you! Ellen's a brilliant witch. She belongs here, not, in a, not with a family that doesn't appreciate her. It's true, though. What should I do this week? Probably contemplate... Like, the whole situation that just transpired, and why parents don't have to love their kids. Even, well, they should. They have flesh and blood, but that doesn't always fucking happen, and it sucks. Uh, I'm going to work on blue magic. Again, we're gonna study. We'll de-stress over the weekend. Oh good, I've met to the point where it's two per day. Virginia and I are sitting quietly in our room in the afternoon when... Ellen slams open the door. Who told... What? Who told Potsdam on me? Over about what? The pictures. Oh, those. So it was you? I said I wouldn't and I didn't. I'm just not surprised she found out. She's the headmistress. She knows everything. Are you in trouble? All at once, the anger deflates. She burned the pictures and I got detention and... She said if I did it again, I could be expelled. That's awful! We won't let that happen, will we, Virginia? Um, right. Look, I don't want to say I told you so, but... I kinda did. You knew the rules. It probably wasn't a good idea to have those pictures developed at the mall. She said that wasn't enough and that nobody should ever mix science and magic. Well, they don't really go together. They- yeah, they- they do. People have to dissect frogs in science class. That's- that's nasty. That's not what science is about, it's about learning. Virginia backs away, holding up her hands. I think I'm getting out of here while I can. She leaves the room. Gonna be okay? And yeah, science and magic should go together, because you want to learn how things work rather than just theorize and then have that be the ultimate truth. 
Because it could be completely wrong and stupid when... I don't know, maybe you have a way of detecting blue magic through a camera. Which would mean you can see through illusions with a lens. That's cool! I guess I have to be. Before I... If I had gotten in trouble, I would have worried about what my mom would think. Now that doesn't matter anymore. But I still don't think it's right. I did break the rules, but the rules are wrong. I don't know how to help her with this one. Uh, we try to show her, Potsdam that she's wrong. For the most part, there's someone standing at the door to my room. Hey, fish, is Virginia with you? No, sorry. Too bad. I just, it's just, I bought all this candy on vacation and it's too much for me to eat. So I figured she might want it. Well, do you want a jelly bean? He holds up a bag of red and yellow candy. No thanks. I'll tell Virginia when I see her. I'm not one for jelly beans. Though they are good, it's just... I'd rather have... actual food. Helen and I are sitting in our dorm room when we hear a knock on the door. Is it Luke again? When I look outside, there's no one there. Can I come in? Who's there? Any? Why can't I see you? I'm cloaked. Please, may I come in? Sure, I guess. What's going on? Mo a moment later, there's a shimmering in the air and Minnie vanishes. It appears. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to keep a low profile at the moment. I heard about what happened with you and the camera. Oh. I don't blame you. I came to tell you some things that you might not have otherwise heard. You're wild seed too, Fish. You should listen. The reason so many things like cameras and CD players are banned on campus is to prevent students from getting any ideas about mixing magic and electronics. It's very strictly forbidden. Mixing how? It doesn't matter how. Anything even close to those lines and it'll crack down. Why? Does magic interfere with electromagnetic fields? Or the other way around? Minnie takes a deep breath. Let me go on a bit. Let me go on a bit before I get back to that question, alright? Most people don't know, even if they're born magical. They're just told that it shouldn't be done or can't be done. They're taught not to ask. That's bad. That's actually very bad. There was a mu there was a student here last year or so I heard about named Muset. I think she was a snake. She got good grades and she got interested in magical technology. She had a good reason, but that didn't matter. She was just a student, a wild seed, and it was she was disobedient. That made her dangerous. So they expelled her. They stripped her magic and wiped her memories and they... Well, she's gone now. I know already, if I don't behave, I should be ex I could be expelled and lose my mind. Professor Potsdam told me that. You know that in theory you might think that's because you're one of the top students in our class. You know that's true. You might think that you could talk your way out of it. Don't. Don't try to fight this. Musette was a good student with special circumstances, and it didn't save her. And because of that, I'm not going to answer your question. What? Why not? Because it might make you curious. I'm already curious! You're also sensible. You know that it's dangerous. You don't know exactly what the danger is. You won't experiment, will you? I don't know. You can do it when you're out of school, in the comfort of not school. Because chances are you're not going to live here forever. Look, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm trying to help you. You think it's right to have these rules and keep them a secret? Don't ask me that. <sighs> Sorry, I don't... I know you don't understand, just listen. Until you graduate, you don't have the right to, to a trial, so it's better to keep your head down and play along. Once you're full members of society, then ask questions. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I guess. No technology, no questions. Fine. Good. You really have to go. Don't tell anyone that we talked about this, alright? She ducks out the door. I stick my head out after her, but the hall is already empty. That was weird. Yeah. Are you gonna give up on science? I can't. But... No one here even seems to understand what scientific reasoning means. It's like they're afraid of... of the word. Eh? Nothing. They're afraid of the word. Oh. I've got to think. 
I'm going to the library. I'll see you later. Okay, fine. Bye. Ellen hurries away. I think something's wrong here in the school. They don't like logic. We're in a cult. I'm calling it now. What? Ellen has to serve her detention. Oh. Maybe I should go study. Minnie's nowhere to be seen. Eh, fair enough. When Ellen returns from her detention, she seems to be lost in thought. Hey, was it awful? Hmm? Your detention, was it awful? Oh, I don't remember. You were just there. Had a lot on my mind? What were you thinking about? I can't tell you. What? Not yet, I'm still thinking. I feel like I'm missing a lot of what's going on here. She's got an idea about the word science scaring people who use magic. I don't know. Maybe they played Final Fantasy VI and got the idea of Magitech being horrible. Which might be the case. But it's a nice day, so I decided to go for a walk outside. Plenty of other stu- Plenty of other people had the same idea. I can see a couple of girls, horses by the capes, out for a jog in the distance. There's a small group of people up ahead having a discussion. No. An argument. Did that guy just shove somebody? I think the music bugged out. I walk closer to see what's going on. A mindless, violent twit. Then no, I... Then no, I don't. What? Mindless, violent twit. Then no, I don't. Yo, please, just let it go. What's he got that I haven't got, huh? He's my friend, that's all. Which means he listens to me. Maybe that's a new concept for you, listening to what a lady actually says. SHUT YOUR FACE! Please, just leave me alone. This is so embarrassing. You're the one making a fool out of me. I've done everything for you, and you just throw it back in my face. I'm not... You're killing me. You are killing me. Is that what you want? Is that what it takes to make you happy? No! Because that's what's going to happen, isn't it? You're not leaving me any choice. Admit it! And back off. Fix your own problems. Eo glares at the two of them, his lip curling in distaste. Next time, you're not getting away. His fist still clenched. Keo turns and walks away from Minnie and Jacob. Oh. Did they break up, or is Minnie and Jacob just hanging out? And Keo's just being the horrible, controlling boyfriend figure. They broke up. Calling it. Which means purely by accident that he wa he's walking towards me. Uh, hi, Keo. Get out of my way. Okay, sure. I step aside and let him pass. This isn't any of my business. I probably shouldn't interfere. In the distance, I see Minnie shake her head at Jacob and then run off alone. Wow. That's, uh, quite a lot of shit there. That's concerning. Very concerning. I guess... Let's do a bit of... Yeah, let's just do blue magic and studying. Catch myself up, you know. <coughs> Dispersion. Sacrifices some of the caster's magic, causing a target to lose magic similarly. Huh. Mind wall. Target is temporarily protected against mental attacks. Nice. Good plan. In the middle of the night, someone bangs on the door. Wake up. Everybody come to the gym. What's going on? It's storming outside. What, is there a tornado? No, it's the thunder dance. What? Get your shoes on. We have to stomp. What? Apparently, during the first thunderstorm of April, we're required to dance around and scream and basically make as much noise as possible. Which is sort of fun, but having been woke up in the middle of my sleep cycle, I feel dizzy and everything seems a bit surreal. Dark shapes flutter around me, illuminated by the occasional spark of lightning. And later, fire. Fire dancing. 
We're shooed to the safety of the walls while a few of the upperclassmen take turns weaving fire around themselves as they twist and spin. I can't see how they're doing it. Is the fire attached to anything or are they controlling it solely with their minds? Maybe they got a wand? That's one thing to do. William turns out to be one of the best, keeping multiple streams of fire whipping dangerously around his limbs. Those skills must be terrifying in a duel. But for the rest of us, there's only stopping and howling until we collapse from exhaustion and finally go back to bed. I need more sleep. I thought I slept already this week. What the fuck? I'm already fa- well, fuck, I guess I'm sleeping Monday. Ellen is working on something at her desk, but she keeps pausing and staring at me. What? Do I have something on my face? No, I'm trying to decide. Decide what? Whether or not I'm ready. I guess I could try. I mean, I trust you, so if I do this wrong, nothing too bad should happen. I think. Do what wrong? I want you to become part of a mystical conspiracy. What? A conspiracy. A group of people working together in secret. There are lots of secret societies here already. There's the Rose Cross, and the Midnight Poets, and the Bullenhorns Club. But I think that's just a group of seniors getting together to get drunk and smash things. There are probably more, but they're secret. There's Steamed Crab? Okay, subtitles, thanks for that. That actually sounds pretty delicious. So I want us to start our own conspiracy. You can perform rituals together and become powerful. Then we can take over the world. Except not really. So, will you join my conspiracy? You'll have to go through some tests. That's important in creating a good secret society. This sounds dangerous, but sure. Alright, I'm game. Good! What do I have to do? Well, we need a better place to do the initiation. Come to the gym with me tonight when it's dark. Okay, fine. After dark, Ellen and I sneak out to the gym. Welcome, initiate. Initiate. Don't tease, we have to do this right. Otherwise it won't be believable as with tradition later. Okay, fine. Do you pledge to always seek truth? Yes. Do you promise to offer all your knowledge to the conspiracy when it is needed unless presented by other promises? Prevented by other promises. Do you understand to keep the secrets of the conspiracy except when it is necessary to aid truth? I guess? Do you swear to be the good boy, the best boy, the goodest boy that ever done good boy, so help you, good boy? Yes. Alright, now look away while I set this up. At least I don't have to wear a blindfold. Ellen has placed five colored candles on the floor and a small block of stone beyond them. I'm going to show you a very small red spell. It's a pinprick. It's very simple. She talks me through it. It is a very easy spell. What's this for? This represents how we're learning the five colors of magic. We have to test members to see which of the colors has chosen them. Then we record your name and color in the official records. Pick up each color candle in turn and cast the pinprick spell at the stone. Okay, and cast the spell five times. Now, did your spell feel more powerful when you were touching any of those colors? You gave me a red thing? Wait, hang on. I'm gonna save here. Wait a minute. This isn't a ritual. Yes, it is. You're doing a science experiment. That too. Look, I did research on this, okay? There's nothing wrong with practicing magic or trying to make your spells more powerful. That's completely a lab behavior for a witch. It's technology they're afraid of. So anything that looks like what they think of as science scares them. Because they think it's the same thing. Science doesn't mean robots and lasers. Any search for knowledge is science if you go about things in a rational way and test your ideas before you put your faith in them. So I thought if I could find a way to disguise experiments so they look more like rituals, I could get people to help me test things. Sorry I had to trick you. It's okay, this is fun. Will you be part of my conspiracy now that you know what I'm doing? Could you help me plan it? Sure. So, did I just... Was that it? So this is what she's been planning all week. Plan certainly has possibilities. I feel like I probably should have said red because that did show up on the thing. And again, it's probably just because red was the first spell on the list rather than whatever. Saturday morning, the mail and allowances are delivered. What happens if I did say red? I 
think was the strongest one I was touching the red candle. Very well. Ellen pulls out a fancy scroll and writes something on it. You are now a minion of Bay. Minion? How am I just a minion? Because it's my conspiracy. That's not fair. I think I liked the other one. So what am I? Architect. Okay, we'll do that. I'm an architect now. Good. On Saturday morning, the mail and allowances are delivered. What should I do today? Uh, sleep. Sleep is what we should do. I guess window shopping is another alternative, but uh, what's in the magic store for $25 that I could afford? Nothing. Nothing at all. I'm going to save up for the furry set. If I can. Because that would be adorable. Maybe the fairy wings. The bat wings would make you look weird, right? Yeah, okay. Amulet. Black Magic 30. Ooh. What about the sextant? No. Uh, what do I have currently? I can't afford anything, so I guess it's just window shopping, but, like... I should have some. I don't know if I have an amulet on or not. It's a lovely day, so I go out, go for a walk along the campus. In the distance, I see Keo and Minnie walking arm in arm. I guess they made up. Duck! I dodge quickly as something flies over my overhead. Oops. Sorry about that. He retrieves her soccer ball. Still a lot easier to control them with my foot with my foot than with a spell. I've got three more years of classes to work on it, right? True. Come kick some goals with me? Sure, I guess. Soon enough our freshman year will be over. Okay, inventory. I do not have the the thing, so I gotta save up like thirty-five more dollars. Okay. What should I do this week? Sleep. Um, probably... Work on the rest of this shit. And... Study, study. There we go. <sighs> Good. We, we got it. Something wrong? Kind of. I told Professor Potsdam. I told her to do it. Do what? Make my family forget about me for good. Oh. Can't go back. I don't belong there anymore. They'll be happier without me. Will you be happier without them? Probably. I mean, I'll miss them, but I'll miss the way they used to be. Can't be happy living with people who don't want me there. You deserve to be appreciated. Yeah. Then, do you want to stay with my family? I don't think that would be a good idea. Why not? Because if I wanted to stay with you, it'd be like we were sisters. Oh! They could be my secret girlfriend. I don't want to be a secret. I want us to have a chance to date properly, not as roommates. I'll miss you over the summer, though. Well, write to me, won't you? Of course. Well, things with my star wand, I guess, if that's at all possible, unless we have owls. What if we could teleport letters to each other, based on the per the link between our bonds or whatever, rather than, uh, geographical location? This is important for her to do this- her to do this right. Yeah. Not that I'm complaining. Only one? Fuck! Like... Thought I would've gained, like, three for- by now, doing just fucking blue magic at this point. Notice that Ellen is still in bed, well after her usual time to get up on a weekday. Are you feeling okay? I'm fine, I'm just staying in today. You're slacking off? Maybe I'm rubbing off on you. Today's Good Friday. Oh! It's not an official holiday here, though. I you know, I just thought it'd be nice to have a quiet day. That makes sense. Who am I to judge? As long as she doesn't mind me studying um, while I'm, like, while she's resting and all that. What should I do today? Probably window shop. Let's be honest. 
If I can freely reduce my stress, I'm going to do it. And next week. Let's see. I'm good on stress, so we'll call that. I'm not doing... I don't want to do nothing but black magic, though that would probably help as well. Um, I can increase my mana by five or four and then sleep so I'm ready for the next week. Let's study over the weekend instead. Let's do that. We'll learn a bit of every of one of the 50 plus spells. Uh, hello. Hi. He holds up a large coffee can, which he is wrapped in blue paper and decorated with patterns on of glued on pebbles. Inside the can are a bunch of loose dollar bills. I'm collecting funds for the May Day bill. Would you like to contribute? The year's almost over and you won't need your allowance for anything else. What a, but I'm coming back next year, aren't I? I'll donate five. Thanks, fish. You're welcome. I thought I would need the allowance for next year. Or is this almost the end of the game? I wonder now, is there gonna be one final exam? Sleeping reduces stress. Yay. Saturday morning, the mail and allowances have arrived. What should I do? Study. And why, why is Minnie gone? Where'd Minnie go? That's This is it. The end of the school year. Two more days of classes, then final exams, then the ball. And then we go home. Um... I should probably study then, just in case, because maybe I'll need the extra mana. Tuesday morning, someone knocks on our door. Good morning. Here are your exam schedules for the day. He hands us a piece of paper. But there's a mistake. We're all scheduled for the same time. Then you know, the final is a group exam. Does that mean if one of us fails, we all fail? I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out, but fuck. I hope 63 man is enough. Out of the class period, we arrive for our exam as instructed. All three of us. Well, my spirited fillies, today's exam works a bit differently than usual. You're all going into the dungeon together. You ca your task is to find the crystal orb and use your energy to light it up before time runs out. It will not be easy to find and you will face many dangers, so you need to work together to conquer this challenge. Good luck! You claps your hands and the world starts to spin. For a moment after the teleport, I'm not sure what happened. All around is complete blackness. Am I in the dungeon? Am I lost somewhere in a void? I'm standing on something, I think. And Ellen casts a light spell, and our surroundings become dimly visible. We are in a vast dark space, empty and silent, far from any wall or landmark. That light out, it might attract monsters. But we can't see. We all huddle around it, the light won't get far. We crouch to get closer together. Okay, now what? We wait for a moment, but this time no booming voice speaks overhead. Apparently, Professor Potsdam's instructions are all we get. The rest is up to us. Let's see which way we need to go. Alright. Finals time. We cast a spell and the air around us swirls faintly. That's strange. That usually gives me a direction. Guess we'll have to look the hard way. Crystal has to be out here somewhere. This place is huge and we have a time limit. We need a plan. I have an idea. They both stop and look at each other. We need to find the crystal. That's the goal. That's how we win. We need to find the boss monster. There's bound to be one. And if we don't handle the main threat, it could sneak up on us. Ellen's right. It's the crystal that matters. We could defeat dozens of monsters and still fail the exam if we don't reach the goal in time. I don't know about dozens, but I'd like to try. Some other time. They're fine, so how do we do this? 
We don't know how big the place is, but it's obviously pretty big, and there's a time limit. So I think the trick here is going to be figuring out how to search most efficiently. You guys know Far Speech? I do. Great! What we need to do is both connect to Virginia now. While we're all in the same place, then keep that connection going. That way we can split up and still keep in touch. Okay. Concentrate. Virginia suddenly laughs. You guys are making my brain tickle. Along with this last four. I'm not sure, but if the connection drops, stop what you're doing and hold still. I mean, you'll still be in a known location and we can reestablish. In a way, we should move out. They're probably traps, so don't run and use detection spells if you have them. If you see anything, crystal mon crystals, monsters, anything, stay still and think it. Let's go. There's an awful lot of darkness around here. If I do use any detection spells, I'll have to cast them many times over to do any good. Uh, probably True Sight. Not sure how much good True Sight will do when I can barely see at all. Most of the time, the spell appears to do precisely nothing. I do, sp I do once spot a nasty tr tangle of previously invisible knives, which could have done me damage if I hadn't avoided it. According to Virginia, I'm occasionally walking in circles. I'm more confused than I realize, or some kind of trap is redirecting me despite my precautions. After a while, the mental connection between me and Virginia appears to fade, then finally snaps. Luckily, I'm able to cast Far Speak again and carry on. We each creep around, comparing notes on what we're seeing, and at long last, we strike Pater. There's a strong magical signature in one direction which must be the crystal we're looking for. Unfortunately, there is a large group of monsters in the near vicinity. We can go around them, but if we get to the crystal, they'll probably notice us. Ellen insists that violence is not the best answer, but there are too many of them to teleport them away. Someone will have to act as a lure and then get them to leave the crystal alone. Cast Call. Luckily, I have just the right spell for this occasion. I cast Call, summoning all creatures to my current location, and then I hightail it out of there. The monsters will n now be drawn to where I was, and I can go somewhere else without interference. At last, we can, we can head straight for the crystal. There it is. How do we make it work? I don't know. We said we should put our energy into it. If there are little indentations around the edge. I think we should put our hands here. Okay. Virginia steps closer and touches the rim of the pedestal. Energy sparks to life within the crystal. My turn now. I feel a strange rush, rushing sensation as power flows out of me and into the crystal. Finally, Ellen approaches the crystal. When she touches it, it throbs with light. Did we do it? A familiar sensation of teleportation washes over us. We did it! We did it! Woo! Congratulations, all of you. You've successfully completed your freshman year. That will be five merits for each of you. Now go and relax. You have a dance coming up to enjoy. We did it. We're done. Yay! There are no classes today or tomorrow. Everyone's relaxing, making plans for the dance, and getting their pictures taken for the yearbook. Funny, my old school picture day was near the beginning of the year, and here it's almost literally the last minute. The whole thing has to be finished overnight. But I thought pictures were banned. This is it. Last day. After the dance, my parents will come and take me home. Which means I need to sort out what I'm doing for the dance. All this time, Ellen's been telling me to wait, to keep quiet, to keep the secret. Maybe now at last we can get started. Uh, Ellen. She grabs a box I had barely noticed and shoves it under a pillow on her bed. Uh, hi! You couldn't have knocked, but I live here. And that is exactly why I wanted to wait. How am I supposed to have any secrets to surprise you with if you're in my room watching me get dressed? I won't peek. You're not supposed to see my dress until you meet me for the dance. Meet you? That's how a date works, right? We could each give each other a corsage, but I don't think Professor Potsdam would like it if we tore up the flowers. Right. So if I'm not supposed to see you get dressed and I'm supposed to meet you somewhere else in order to escort you to the dance, we're escorting each other. Where am I supposed to get dressed? Oh, right. I hadn't thought of that. I guess I could get dressed in the bathroom. They might get your clothes dirty. What do you suggest? She looks back and forth between the bed and me. 
How about you turn your back and let me sneak out of here? Then I'll get dressed in Lena's or Pastel's room. I'm sure she won't mind. I'll meet you in front of the gym this evening, alright? Okay, cool. Fine. What else? You, you do you. That's fine. It's really rather cute seeing her take charge like this. Now I need to get ready. Uh, party dress. Put it on. Uh, yeah, keep the wand on. That's fine. Dress color. Ooh! I can change the color of it. Nice. Uh... I like this... I like this kind of color scheme going here. It's nice. I prefer a deeper blue into a different color, though. Maybe there is one? Mm. Maybe I gotta up this. Oof. I guess that's saturation. I'll deal with that. That's fine. Brings out the hair. Maybe the eyes. I don't know. Wait in the darkness for my date to arrive. Ha! Um, fish? I look alright? Hell yeah, you look alright! You look pretty nice too. So what now? Guess we go in? Um... She holds out her hand to me, saying nothing except with her eyes. I place my palm over hers and squeeze her hand. Let's go. The ceiling shimmers with translucent rainbow spheres, like enormous soap bubbles that never burst. Alright, are you talking disco balls? Are you talking disco balls? Is, uh, are we gonna disco? Because I'm not dressed for a disco. I, I don't, I'm not prepared. I don't even know how to dance in a disco. All I got is that little finger gun thing where you do that and just, that, that's it. That's all I fucking got. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I could probably moonwalk, but that's, that, those are the only two dance moves I fucking know. The walls are masked with climbing ivy, and the stage is surrounded with flowers. The girl standing on the stage, I think she's a senior at Snake Hall, wears a long white dress and a wreath of flowers and silver stars. No one's dancing yet. Instead, we all wait in a slowly moving line. Every guest of the dance, either alone or with their date, or dates in some cases, must process across, must process across the gym floor and bow or curtsy to the Queen of the May. They then stand aside. They then stand aside, and the next subject approaches. It means everyone has a moment in the spotlight to show off clothing and partners. Ellen's hand is warm in mine, and the smile on her face is radiant. We curtsy and withdraw. We wait quietly with the rest of the students as the processions continue. The very last girl to walk up the aisle is a junior that I don't know, whose hair is both blonde and pink at the same time. Instead of curtsying before the stage, she walks up the stage and kneels before the queen, who places the crown of flowers on her head. Everyone applauds, and then the music begins. You know, I don't actually have a lot of experience with dancing, especially with a girl. I don't have any experience in dancing at all. We'll improvise. It's totally fine. We both look at each other confused and shy, and then suddenly Ellen laughs. I wish I knew everything. Even if it meant turning into Professor Potsdam? I wouldn't be so bad. Maybe, but I'd much rather be here with you than with her. Oh. Why are you here with me? I mean, I know you said, but... But what? It's hard to believe that anyone would want to be dancing with... Be dating... Me. Especially as a... Except as a joke. You think I'm kidding? No, not... Really. I don't think you're like that, but... You know how I always wanted things to be, and I know how things usually are. I kept putting you off and saying I had a good reason, but... I kept putting you off and saying I had a good reason, but mostly I was giving you the time to change your mind or get involved with someone else. And then it wouldn't be my fault, and it wouldn't be your fault, and we could just let it go, and I would remember the romance we almost had. No hard feelings. Do you want me to leave? No. Life has gotten kind of complicated lately, and every time I think I've got a handle on it, it changes again. I like knowing how things work. I like doing things the right way. But I also know that if I want to learn, I have to try. So I'd like to try dancing with you now. Good. So who leads? I lead. You've got better hips. Well, thank you for that. Together, we take the floor. I put my hands on Ellen's shoulders, blushing slightly at the warmth on her skin. Her cheeks are pink too, but her eyes are sparkling at me. 
As the song goes on, we relax, moving together more comfortably. This has to look adorable. Finally, it ends and we stand there smiling at each other. If this were a perfect storybook romance, what would happen now? Are you sure you want to find out? I'm sure. Well then, something like this. Ha ah, ha! Ah! Yay! Best ending. This this is my ending. If this is the end of the game, this is the yeah. This is the only ending I'm going for. He leans forward and kisses me, soft and sweet. Flushed from the dance and the warmth of the near nearness of her, I kiss her back. When we finally part, I half expect the room to break out in applause. But why should they? We're just a perfectly normal couple couple going about our lives. Just a couple dancing together, surrounded by sparkles and a night of magic. Fish eyes plus Ellen Middleton. Ellen dances dance photo now added to gallery. Oh, I gotta see that. Can I see the gallery? I cannot yet. Shit. And so the school year came to an end. We were freshmen no longer. Over the summer, we would look back at our yearbooks and remember the friends we had made while thinking about the adventures still to come. There's lots of magic stuff out there waiting. Yay! Upload yearbook page? Fuck yeah! I'm gonna do that. Your yearbook page has been posted. You can do it- Oh. That's, that's actually a thing? It is. Nice. Fish Eyes has been immortalized on the internet. I love this. I love the fact that Fish Eyes is immortalized on the internet for all to see. I love this. End game. And what about this gallery? Can I, can I open it? I can't open the fucking gallery. Python console. Oh right, it's made in Renpi. Forgot about that. I'm back from magical dinner. Welcome back. You, I was twerking. Uh, you missed a, a yearbook post. That's about it. Apparently, I don't have a gallery to uh to view, which is sad because I thought I would. Uh, title, I guess. We're done. That's the end of the game. And I still have about, I don't know, 40 minutes? Sad. Sad? Look at that! It's Fish Eyes. Fish Eyes graduated. Possible future career. Meditation guru? Nice. Go regimental? Nice. I haven't actually read all this. And I missed it? Yeah, you missed it. Steam, I turned you the fuck off! Why? Offline. There we go. Yeah, you missed it. It's okay, though. It'll be on the VOD. <laughs> Kinda curious what the console commands would do. Let's see. Gallery... Well, shit. Gallery is not defined. Oh, crap. Donald looking ugly. Yeah. Can I actually script in Python here? <laughs> Invalid syntax. Did I forget how to syntax? Hang on. How do I define something in Python? I swear I did- I knew this at one point. Maybe I have to include some kind of parenthesis that I forgot about. I do! Okay. Gallery. Oh fuck, it's letting me script! <laughs> okay, I'm stopping that now. I'm stopping that now, because if I do that, I'm going to break something. Okay, so that was Magical Diary Horse Hall. I don't know what to do now. I honestly don't know what to do now. I think I might just end the stream. Is dude hacking? 
I probably can. I've learned Python, it's just I don't know what all the objects are for this game, so I don't want to, like, break it. Or anything. Yeah, move Streamlabs over here. Yeah, you join at the end. Well, you join at the beginning, and then you join at the end afterwards. We're going to do that. That's fish eyes. Right there. I love that. Best character. And we got to kiss best girl. At the dance. So yay. Uh, that is the... Yeah, I'll end the stream. It's getting hot in my room and I need to probably stop recording because that's probably making the room hotter than it needs to be. So thank you guys for coming by. Hope you enjoyed. This will be live on Saturday. Or Sunday. Probably Sunday. Definitely Sunday. It's Friday. So Sunday night. Whenever this goes up. Um, I'll be back again Tuesday, unless, uh, shit happens. Hopefully it won't. But, yeah, I'll be back again Tuesday. Videos are prepped and ready to go for the next week, so I just gotta, like, do it. So that's enough of that, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the, in the next time, the next stream, next video, whatever this is. Bye-bye!